So we came down to the steel plant last week and talked to Mo Gaddo about the uh, moving of the hood over the uh, boss vessel for its reline and at that stage they hadn't actually started replacing the bricks. Well here we are a week later uh, and they're pretty much halfway through it so we've come down again to find out uh, how the rebricking is going. Delighted to be joined by Paul Wagstaff. Paul, your plant area specialist for refractories. Now before we get on to the actual bricking of the vessel itself, I want to talk to you a little bit about how the teams here manage the wear of the lining before it comes up because this vessel has done more lives than it had planned to do. How do they plan that and, 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 and how do you know how thick the lining has got before you replace it? Uh, we play it to the, this build, on the last build, a scan is taken on the wreck uh, to determine the thickness of what's left and then so after the bricks have been installed they have an overall measurement and then a scan during the heat which is every time a, a charge goes through the, the vessel and it could determine how much that vessel deteriorates throughout the, the weeks and the months. Because I understand from Dean in the first interview we did, these things, as we can see around us, they're about a metre long to start with, and by the end, the time you take them out, they could be as thin as 30 millimetres. So that's quite precise. Now, when you wrecked the vessel, what, what was the state of the safety lining, and what was the implications of that? Well, during the wreck of the safety uh, this vessel, we managed to save the safety uh, by taking the, the lining out nice and precisely. It came out nice. We had a little bit of damage on the safety line in, which we managed to uh, repair in service, basically saving the safety line in, which had a cost of uh, saving the company around about £150,000. Yeah, so good management to get to this place. A lot of work's gone on. Of course, now we get to the rebricking piece. I'd like to bring in Chris Bryce. Chris Bryce is from Vesuvius. Chris, you're the, uh, uh, from the company that m manufactures these bricks and brings them to us. Now tell us, these aren't ordinary bricks, are they? No, they aren't. They're uh, magnesia carbon bricks uh, that go into the, uh, the lining. Uh, specialists for, for high temperature application uh, and for steel making applications, yeah. And they look a bit different to the ones we saw going into the blast furnace a couple of years ago. They, are they different? Yeah, they're a different type of brick. Uh, the environment that they work in is different. It's, um, the steel making process is an oxidation process. So you need a, a magnesia carbon brick uh, to work with the basic uh, refractories. It makes me wonder that you know, when Tata Steel say to Vesuvius we're due a reline of this vessel, which is getting on in age and probably isn't the same shape as when it was first put in place, you know, how do you design 17,000 bricks for a vessel that is probably not quite square? Yeah, so it's a good point Tim, this vessel is 20 odd years old now, the shell. Um, and it's, it's misshapen. So you design a standard vessel, but you have to factor in additional spares. And what we do is we, we look at the end of the build, what we've got left over, which, what we use in each area, and then the next build, we make sure that we bring in extra ones of that shape and less of the other. So we, don't, we sort of balance the cost. And these things come from the other side of the world. Tell us, sir, why that is, Chris. So the manufacturing plant is based very close to the source of the raw material. So the, the raw material is, is magnesia, it's a, it's a mineral that's dug out the ground uh, and our manufacturing plant is, is in China, uh, right next to the very best source of, of the highest grade material. So that's, that's why we, uh, we bring from China. And I understand that you've come around, around the world, a bit unusual this time and there was a bit of a delay getting them here. To, uh, Chris, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, there was, yeah. So um, this, this particular vessel that was uh, scheduled to, to land in, in Tata Port Talbot, uh, had all the products stuck uh, the other side of the Suez Canal when they had the crisis there. So uh, there's a bit of uh, a bit of uh, drama. Two weeks stuck on the water before it could uh, carry on its route. But uh, we got it here in time. Yeah. I can imagine that was fairly chaotic. And fair play to everyone involved for, for getting them here. Now, of course, getting them to the UK is one thing. Uh, if I can just come back to you, Paul, getting them onto site and then up here. So we're on the second floor again. And what people might not realise is that these things actually came up in a lift which uh, is just behind us there so they come up from the ground floor on a lift they come here to the storage area and I know there's a lot less here now uh, than when we came a week ago how on earth do the guys know which bricks to take at which time? Well, it's all on the plan we've got a brick in plan um, given to us by our partners at uh, Vesuvius uh, so it's all designed to go in different sections uh, as you can see on the bricks we've got coloured areas as well so the guys know what areas are coloured and what brick goes in what areas. So it's quite precise, 
but the bricklayers have got to put them in a certain ratios and certain shapes into the vessel. Yeah, and we saw that colour-coded chart on the wall and, you know, we, we can see the bricks here and some of them are different shapes. I think they're called Sharpies and... Slows. Sl Sharpies and Slows, and we'll have a look at those shortly. But, of course, key to all of this is a thing called the King Brick, apparently. Chris, can you explain to us what the King Brick is and why it's so important? So, so the King Brick is the, is the first brick that goes in the, the centre of the bottom of the vessel and everything is built off that. Uh, it weighs 450 kilos, so it's a, it's a bit of a lump to manoeuvre. Uh, and you've got to get it within uh, a millimetre or two of, of, of accuracy in the centre of the vessel. So we, we, we accurately place that, we take our time, we get that right, uh, and then everything builds from that. If you get that wrong, the whole build is wrong. You know, if, if it's in the wrong place, you can't fit a certain ratio in and, and, and you cause a problem. So that's uh, it's the moment at the start, we've got to get that right. Yeah. So the scale of activities here is absolutely enormous, but do not underestimate the, the science behind the composition of the bricks, the accuracy within which they have to be put into the vessel and the importance of that to the, to the life of the vessel over many, many months and millions of tonnes. So Paul, Chris, thanks very much for your time. We're going to go and talk to the brickies now.